A few years ago, I decided I wanted to take underwater photos. I'd been taking photos above the water for years, and I thought, how can I take photos under the water but not spend thousands of pounds on an expensive underwater camera case? In this video, I'm gonna show you some really cheap and accessible ways that you can take great photos underwater, um, not have to spend thousands of pounds, not even have to spend hundreds of pounds. One of the first things I bought was a clear plastic case for an existing camera that I had, an old mirrorless camera. And this just went around the, ca the camera and had a clear Perspex cover for the lens. Now this was super cheap and super easy to use. Really small, packs up into my uh, suitcase when I went abroad, went on holiday. And this was perfect because it allowed me to explore underwater photography without actually shelling out much money at all. I think it cost me around 40 pounds, something like that. This is perfect for a first step. The great thing about this is that if you've got an older camera sitting in the cupboard that you're not using, then you're not shelling out any more money on a specific camera just for under, under the water. Do make sure you buy the right size for your camera. You want the camera to sit in there snugly. One of the benefits of the plastic bag is that it doesn't have to be specific to your camera the way that a underwater camera case does, for example. But you do want it to fit nice and snug so that it's not moving around too much inside the case. And that Perspex cover on the lens can go up nice and flat up against the lens. Just by buying this one cheap item, you can be up and running, taking great underwater photos and more specifically learning how to take great underwater photos and whether it's the right thing for you, whether you really like it, in no time at all, having spent very little money. Make sure you shop around. There are loads of these on the market. If you go to Amazon or your favorite online retailer, you'll find uh, so many of them and I can't guarantee that all of them will be great, but certainly the one I used, which was a Dicker pack. Uh, I used it for many years. I used it constantly, every summer, and it lasted for years until I was ready to invest money in something a bit better, a bit more expensive. Um, but I knew by then that this was something that I wanted to do, so I was happy at that point to invest some more money. There is a downside to this option. It is fairly light and the plastic I found after several years of using the Dicker Pack, and I'm sure this would happen with any brand, is that right at the seams where the, where the plastic was joined, it started to um, come apart. And I found after several years of using it that it started to leak just a tiny bit in the corners now not enough that it would uh, have any impact at all on the camera but it was a, a warning that I needed to stop using this and to invest in something else so that is one of the downsides is that that plastic is not going to last forever but for the price for how much you're going to get use out of it it's actually fantastic you do want to test the camera before you use it. Just put some tissue in there, seal it up as if the camera was in there and dunk it under the water. Make sure that it's watertight. What you don't want to do is put the camera straight in there, put it under the water and it's not watertight. That would be a real problem. Uh, one of the things, one of the benefits of using this is because I was using an old camera, sure I didn't want that camera to get flooded, but if it did, it wasn't gonna be the end of the world. It wasn't my main camera. And uh, thankfully that never actually happened. But uh, that is another consideration, is that you, it's, it's not your primary camera that you're using, potentially. One of the other options that I explored was a point and shoot dedicated underwater camera. Now these are often called tough or rugged, and they're still available uh, for relatively cheap they're a bit more expensive than the plastic bag option but you can also pick them up secondhand and they're, they're a pretty 
good option for exploring underwater photography, exploring the light, understanding how light works under the, under the water. The great thing about these cameras is that they're super small, portable, you can slip them into your board shorts pocket or into uh, just keep it on your wrist on a little strap and it doesn't take up it's not it's not a burden like a great big underwater case is when you're coming down and that's a real mission you might get to that in a later video the other great thing about the point and shoot underwater camera is that uh, going to the beach or going swimming in a lake for example it's a really social occasion so if you've got your mates there your friends that you're swimming with you can hand the camera over to them and it's super simple to use and they can take photos without too much stress on your behalf as the photographer. The, the thing that you need to look out for with these is that they can shoot in RAW. Not all of them will shoot in RAW, uh, but if you can find one that has the ability to shoot in RAW, you really want to go for that because it uh, makes a huge difference to the creative control to be able to edit your photos afterwards once you've uh, taken them when you're back on land you're in front of your computer if you're only shooting jpeg you're not getting anywhere near the same information that you are with raw and uh, you really need it for underwater photos P probably the downside of these is that they're usually fairly small so the sensor size is going to be really small not unlike a mobile phone so this will limit, and the lens is obviously quite small too, they're often a fixed lens, they're not moving in the same way that other point and shoots that are not underwater uh, will. So the, the image quality that you get will be limited by that, but if we're learning how to take photos and what works best underwater, these are less of a consideration. So just bear that in mind. It's something that as you progress, you will want better quality images, uh, better quality photos, larger sensor size, and this will, be, this will limit you in that regard. That was my phone You're telling me I need to do something. And the last budget option I want to mention is the action cam or the or GoPro, the DJI Osmo action cam, any option like that. There are loads of them actually, it's not just GoPro, that's just the most well known and they're a lot cheaper. But I'll leave it up to you to do your research on the quality of them. In terms of taking underwater photos, now these are normally dedicated towards video rather than photos but they will always have a photo taking option or we'll make sure that they do shoot in RAW again and again it's something that because you can pick them up relatively cheaply secondhand they are also a cheap option when you compare it to what it costs to buy a full uh, underwater camera case this is what we're talking about here the great thing about these is that again they're small and light and you can be experimenting with them and taking them out on every swim that you go on and learning about how to take underwater photos. The bad side, the downside to me is that certainly when I was first using a GoPro, this is a few iterations ago, the time lag between each photo was so long, especially when you're shooting in RAW, it used to take a couple of seconds and by that stage whoever I was photographing had already swum off so that was the downside but certainly if your subject isn't swimming away from you too quickly this is something that you should possibly consider they are they have a very wide angle of view so you need to be right up close to your subject in order to get an image in the full frame that you're taking and the sensor size also is quite small but they're a good budget option for taking underwater photos probably the last thing you'll consider would be a underwater case dedicated to your camera this would be for an slr or a mirrorless and it's probably the last step in the journey towards taking great underwater photos that came for me after several years of using some of the things that i've mentioned 
in uh, this video and in fact I still use many of the options including especially a GoPro uh, when I'm out and about with the big underwater case a couple of the other things you might want to consider while we're talking about cheap stuff and I've got my notes so let me just double check so a little squeegee for getting the water off the front of your lens cover now this is the case even with a little plastic cover for your camera this just gets the water droplets off because you're not always taking photos under the water sometimes you come above the water and then you get those little drops on there you can buy some solution or you can lick the front of your lens port but one of the best uh, manual options is just a little squeegee it costs about a, a pound and that's super useful so that's something you might want to think about even as a budget option and when you're back on the beach to have a microfiber towel to dry stuff off to avoid getting anything wet if you need to open the, the camera you want to dry it off first or open the camera case dry it off first get rid of all those drips so you're not getting the the water where the dry should be the other thing that i really recommend you have is a system now I've got my own system, I can tell you about it, but you need to come up with a system by keep, of keeping wet stuff wet, dry stuff dry. So you have a dry bag, a wet bag, and never the two shall meet. And it doesn't have to be sophisticated, it might just be one of those bags that seals up when you fold it over and there's super budget at an outdoor shop. I bought a few at a, one of those cheap sort of knockoff outdoor places which you know for a waterproof bag it just makes so much sense when you're dealing with expensive camera equipment to have those options right from the get-go for keeping your batteries lenses spare lenses the camera itself when you don't want it to get wet so having a dry bag your wet bag also very important so guys, that was my uh, overview of budget options to get into underwater photography. I hope that you found it uh, useful. There's a few things in there that you might want to, that you haven't quite yet considered. If there's anything in this video that you thought needed more sort of um, elucidation, then leave a comment and I'll try to address it. This is a new channel for me and this is all pretty new. So my idea is that in this channel I'll do some more videos on this sort of content and hopefully you'll find it useful. So please, if you've liked it and you've, you've found it valuable, then I'd appreciate if you can like and subscribe, like everyone says, and uh, we can uh, find some more material like this for you in the coming weeks. <laughs> all right, bye for now.